Hey, welcome to Mooney Reads. My name is Beck, and today is November 1st. That means that a lot of different readathons are starting, and Digithon is starting, Nonfiction November is starting, and Graphicathon is starting. Graphicathon only runs through the first week of November, so I thought that I would vlog that experience. This vlog will probably be two or three parts. Um, we'll just see how it ends up going. So this is the first morning of the Graphicathon. Um, before I get started with reading and stuff like that, I thought I would share with you my reading plans. Now with this readathon, there are seven prompts that I'm going to try to do two books per prompt. And that sounds like a lot, but it's really not that much when you consider um, how quickly I end up reading most graphic novels. Um, a lot of these smaller ones will probably take me somewhere between 45 minutes and a half an hour, probably on the shorter side. Um, and some of these aren't even like full length graphic novels. I have some shorter comics on this list and I have some things that I'm only reading part of. So I'm gonna go through it, let you know what my plans are, um, as well as all of these comics. Throughout this week, I also plan on trying to read some of the books that I was supposed to finish last month um, because I'm in the middle of several books. But so far as a very quick TBR goes, um, the first prompt for Graphicathon is an original story. For that, I will be um, trying to read a piece of the essential decks to watch out for. Of course, I left my copy on the other side of the room, so I'll just show you a picture. Um, like I said in one of my recent videos, this isn't one that I'm gonna like sit and read all of. It's it's a chonker, and it's literally a collection that is a couple of decades long. So I'm just gonna read, you know, several pages. I'm gonna sit down and intentionally read it for um, a decent bit of time. Now the graphic novel that I will actually be completing for this prompt is This Place 150 Years Retold, which is nonfiction. Um, it's indigenous history, but I think uh, there's going to be a lot of creative elements to it, so I think that it fits this prompt. For prompt number two, a webcomic, I'm going to be uh, catching up on Heartstopper. And I'm also going to be reading the second volume of Given, which I access online. Prompt number three is a book with your favorite color on the cover. And for that, I'll be reading Paper Girls Volume 2, which features blue on the cover. I will also be reading Queer, A Graphic History, which also features blue on the cover. I have lots of different favorite colors. I like blues. I like greens. I like maroons. I'm indecisive, y'all know, but I just picked blue for the sake of the prompt as my favorite. Prompt number four is a book with a one-word title, and for that I have Mouse and The Pervert. For prompt number five, we have the group book, Taproot. Prompt number six is a book that is your favorite genre, and for that I have My Solo Exchange Diary, Volume 2. Um, by Nagata Kabi and Are You My Mother by Alison Bechtel. Prompt number seven is Own Voices, and for that I'll be reading Chinese Born American, which I have a physical copy of, but again, it's across the room. Um, and uh, then finally, I will also be reading Visibility Has Its Rewards, um, which is a short comic series. So those are my reading plans for the week. I should be able to get through all of these, but you know, we'll see what happens. We'll see what I end up reading. So far as finishing up stuff from last month goes, I know that I'm going to try to complete, like, actually 100% is Love Beyond Space and Time. I started this and only got like 20 pages into it, um, just because I, I literally started it yesterday, but I do feel confident that I can finish this within the week. I have a graphic novel that I wanted to reread last month. Um, that I'm just going to throw in here as something I'm probably going to read. It's Road, Cre Road Queen, Eternal Trip to Love. And then two books that I will be working on throughout the course of the week um, are definitely The Undocumented Americans and Universal Harvester. I have other things that I could work on too, um, but those are the things that are going to be more towards the top of my priority list. But those are all of my thoughts. 
I'm going to go make breakfast or something. I may chill out and watch YouTube videos or edit my Clear Your Shit TBR. Um, I do want to get through at least a little bit of reading before I have to go to work at 2. Um, yeah, I'll check back in when stuff happens. So, I have had cereal, watched some YouTube videos, I have coffee. It's this chameleon cold brew that's pumpkin spice latte that I'm kind of obsessed with. Um, so, I'm all set up to read. I've decided that I'm going to start with Queer, A Graphic History. So, I'm going to settle in and read a bit. So, I've been reading for about a half an hour at this point. I am on page 54 about a quarter of the way through, I did just want to say a couple of things, just because I'm really impressed with this book. I thought that it was going to be good, because I've heard good stuff about it, it's, you know, LGBT history, but it's more than just LGBT history. So often the word queer is used kind of in place of LGBT, but they are actually literally talking about queer history. They talk about queer theory, this whole thing is framed around, um, looking at, like, the queer movement, not just LGBT history, which of course it touches on, but it talks about some of the theory and um, studies and different things like that that have to do with queer theory, and it talks about, like, the difference between um, kind of queer activism versus assimilationist activism. So, I am thoroughly impressed. I've actually been, of course, talks you're sitting on my notes, I've been writing down some people that I either hadn't heard of or need to look up more about because they do mention um, theorists and historical figures and stuff like that by name. Um, so, so far this is actually really incredible. I'm probably going to get a copy of this for myself at some point. So that's where I'm at with that. I may take a short break and then get back to reading and I'll check back in when I have more to say. All right, it is nine o'clock. Um, I have been to work and come back home. While I was at work, I read some on my break. Um, I actually brought Love Beyond Space and Time. Uh, last month I got through the introductory stuff, so the first like 20-25 pages. Um, and then at work I started the first short story and finished it when I got home. Um, so that was Aliens by Richard Van Camp. I don't want to say too much because it's a short story, but it was set in, uh, a science fiction kind of world. There were aliens, but a big piece of what the story centered had to do with um, uh, healers, uh, indigenous healers, and kind of that overlap with queerness, which was interesting. But I still have a decent way through the book to go, uh, so there's a lot of other stories to be had. Then, um, after work, I finished Queer a graphic history. I know I did say a fair amount um, when I was kind of part of the way through. Uh, overall, I was really impressed, and I really want to get a copy myself. It goes through the history of queer theory, uh, but it talks about like the differences between like having queer theory and queer activism um, and queer like culture. So it talks about each of these different aspects, and it goes through what a lot of different people have to say about it, and they break it down uh, to a place that's a lot easier to understand. They referenced so many people. My list of stuff to look up or read um, without looking at the back reading list, because I do want to look at the sources, and I'll probably take a picture of the sources, honestly, but, like... That's a whole page, and I had to add, like, little bits on the side. So sometime next year, you could probably expect a topical TBR that focuses on queer theory. It was already going to happen anyways, because I have a number of different gender theory books, uh, most of which are queer theory adjacent. Um, but I really liked this. I thought that the way that they explained things was really 
good, and I don't think that they simplified it too much. Granted, you know, I haven't looked into all of these concepts that they talked about because they talk about a lot of things. I do know more than I think the average person about queer theory. I do have a graduate cert certificate in gender studies and we talked about queer theory. I worked with a teacher who liked to talk heavily about Michael Foucault even in her undergraduate class. Um, so I've got a decent baseline and I, I thought that they did a good job with this and it made me want to go even deeper and further my understanding. So this was really wonderful. So far as my plans for the rest of the night go, I want to either work on a Road Queen or my Solo Exchange Diary Volume 2. In an ideal world, it might be both, but I probably have other stuff that I should work on. I haven't touched the TBR that I said that I was going to edit, partly because I keep on going back and forth about it a little bit. Because I do want to do the readathon, but I feel like I've made myself a TBR that's too big. And I know that you can skip prompts, but I don't want to skip prompts, but I know I'm going to have to. So um, I may just edit it and put it out, or I may reevaluate. I guess I'll kind of just see what happens on that front. Also, it looks like my day tomorrow is more open than I thought that it would be because I don't have any classes to teach tomorrow. So, I will honestly probably use part of the time to grade for the college class that I teach because I just need to do that, but that also means that I have potentially more time to read, too. Um, so, um, I may check back in before I go to bed. I might not. Um, but if I don't check back in later tonight, I will check back in in the morning. It is Monday, uh, about noon. I've been up for a while, but I haven't really done too much. I filmed my wrap-up and did some Instagram stuff. I didn't read last night, I just ended up talking to a friend. But reading plans for today um, include some lesbians. I would like to reread Road Queen and read... My Solo Exchange Diary of Volume 2. So yeah, those are the plans. I would just like to acknowledge how perfect some of my playlists are for this. These are playlists that I've had for a while. As I am reading this, I am listening to Not Gay Isn't Happy. And then yesterday, I was listening to this playlist, Queer As In Fuck You, as I read Queer A Graphic History. And there is a graphic in that that just fits it perfectly. So I'm living, I also have a playlist that kind of combines these together and is a little bit different um, that I may listen to as I'm reading some of the other stuff. Queen. It was adorable, as expected, um, because I've read it before. I forgot how cool, like, the beginning comics are, because most of it's in black and white, like normal, but, um, at the beginning, there are some that are in color, um, and it kind of makes me wish the whole thing was in color, because it's really cool. So, I definitely loved it. Leo is, like, a badass, like, gay fuckboy, who ends up being a total sap when actually put in a romantic situation. It's super cute and good if you're looking for something that's like pure fluff. 
so that was that. I do want to read my Solo Exchange Diary Volume 2 at some point today, but I do have to stop for a little bit because I've got a friend who needs help moving furniture. Um, so I'm going to go help him with that and uh, get around to reading this sometime after that. As I was getting ready to leave and stuff, it occurred to me that I was dressed in a way that is kind of perfect for the book. So, obviously, you have them. They're very, like, motorcycle badass, kind of. Um, so, a leather jacket is, like, super stereotypical. But on the outside, you have leather jacket. On the inside, it's soft and gay. So... I just thought that was really excellent. An accidental books as outfits, except it's uh, like character instead of aesthetically driven. It's good stuff. I love to see it. Okay. It is now 7.45. Excuse me. I, I finished My Solo Exchange Diary Volume 2. And it kind of makes me want to reread the first one again because I think I remember more about my lesbian experience with loneliness than my solo exchange diary. I think I may have enjoyed the second volume more than the first my, my solo exchange diary, but I don't know if that's because I was anticipating the way that it was written. Um, so I'd kind of like to reread it just to see. But I did like this. It focused a lot on different types of relationships. Like she talks about... Um, her friends and her family relationship and needing um, needing a relationship, needing intimacy with those sorts of people. So it wasn't, um, like, I, I don't think that she talked about, like, romantic partnership at all. Um, and you also start to see her talk a little bit about um, uh, going to the hospital for mental health problems, and uh, she starts to talk about her issues with alcoholism, which is what her um, book that's coming out next year talks about. Yeah, overall, it was a really good read, and it made me think of a, a lot. Uh, you know, she talks a lot about, like, isolation and loneliness, and just with how everything is now in general, of course, that's probably relatable to a lot of people. And, um, like, I know I struggle with reaching out to, to people anyways, um, so, like, I felt some of this. I also found the discussion of alcoholism interesting, too, because it was very much clear that it was, you know, her emotions uh, were the problem, and alcohol just happened to be one of her coping mechanisms, um, along with several other things. And I think that it's important to talk about substance abuse that way, just because most of the time, like, it's not just the addictive component of the substance. You generally have some something before that, whether it's depression or anxiety or life circumstance. I feel like I'm going to have more thoughts and feelings on that, whatever direction she decides to take uh, the one that she's about to publish, especially because I have had family members struggling with alcoholism very recently, so I've got um, a lot of thoughts on being on sort of the other side of that. But I thought that um, the way that she talks about like, having published a memoir and kind of, like, the meta quality to this is also really interesting and really important. You know, she even talks about, like, having people perceive the stuff that she's already published and, like, have an idea of her um, and being worried that people will take that and just think that that's, like, the only piece of her and of her life. And as you kind of read through all of the volumes, you can see how, um, you know, her mental state is changing, the relationships that she's had are changing, and her opinions of the relationships, which, you know, part of that is definitely due to whatever current circumstance it's in and, like, perspective that she has. Um, I don't know. There's just a lot in this whole series. Um, and I really like it. So far as the rest of the night goes, I do want to take some time to clean parts of my house. Um, so I'll be doing that, but I also want to read one more of the graphic novels that are on my TBR because I'm technically one behind. Well, not really. No, no, yeah, because that would be like the extra one. Okay, so 
Um, I don't know which one I'll pick up next. Probably an online one because I haven't read any um, of those yet. But we'll see what happens. Okay, so I technically have done no cleaning yet. I did get a snack and I have been um, putting up transcriptions, which is kind of an ongoing process. I have all my videos captioned, but I want to make transcriptions available too because some people need those. Um, so I've been working on those. But I got around to reading. Visibility has its rewards. It was shorter than I thought that it might be. Um, I haven't I hadn't looked at it before, but it was a comic that came up. Um, there's like a list of a bunch of queer comics. Not not a list, but like a website. I'll link it in the description. It's um, a resource that I think uh, was in. Kathy Tryhart's announcement for the next um, round of the Queer Lit Readathon. So that's where I found it. But um, Visibility has its rewards, uh, features six different people who are trans. Um, I think at least several of them were non binary, if not all of them. Um, and it's basically their responses to like questions about transition or like about the idea of transitioning. And it was really interesting because there were a variety of responses. Um, it's super cool. I definitely recommend checking it out. Uh, there are some of the cartoonists on this list that I am now interested in looking at their stuff. Um, so that was cool. So I guess I will go and maybe do a little bit of the cleaning that I said that I was going to do. Don't know if I'll read a whole lot more tonight, because I am starting to get sort of sleepy. Um, I considered reading another short story, or maybe starting our histories of the future. I don't know what's going to happen, though. Um, but I'll check back in when something does happen. That is the end of part one of that vlog. Part two and three should be coming out relatively soon so you can hear about the rest of the books that I read during the first week of uh, November.